What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Industrial Craft 2. Now today guys, we're going to be messing around with the automation of the production of uranium fuel rods. So that was a little bit of a mouthful, but yes, that is what we are going to be doing. And I am super excited to do this because I really do think it's going to be quite useful compared to most of the other stuff that we've actually set up. So setting up all these machines and setting up the power generation and all that is very nice and it's Great to have it automated and all that, but automating this is gonna be super nice when it comes to actually using a nuclear reactor because these are what are going to fuel the nuclear reactor. It's what's gonna get us those millions and millions of EU from each one. So it's gonna be nice to have a stockpile of this. We're gonna be setting it up right over here and it's actually gonna take up a decent amount of space because if you remember from a couple episodes ago, I set up an automated processing area for uranium ore to go to your tiny piles of uranium-235, I believe, and regular uranium-238. So I've actually taken that down, it used to be out there, and now it is going to come over here along with the processing from the enriched uranium nuclear fuel into the uranium fuel rods. So all the stuff that we have, uh, right in this chest is what we're going to be using today. So I've kind of separated it into two different setups. So right over here, this one might look similar. That's because if you have seen the video on processing uranium ore to the uranium-235 and uranium-238, this is what we used. So we have the macerator, the ore washing plant, and the thermal centrifuge, all of which are going to have ejector upgrades. And then we have the pump, which is going to have a fluid ejector upgrade and two water buckets, of course, to make the infinite water source. So this whole thing is going to be reset up today, but I'm not going to do a huge explanation on it. We're not going to spend that much time on it. I'm just going to reset this up so that we have it where we want it today. And if you do want a better in-depth explanation, you can go check out the other video. And then what we're going to be using for the new setup today is going to be two metal formers, an electric sorting machine, a fluid solid canning machine, and then another three ejector upgrades. So this is relatively similar to what we just set up last episode, which was the automating of the blast furnace. But essentially this is gonna be a little bit simpler because we don't actually need the uh, heat unit generation like we did before. So we can just plug all these in using some insulated copper cable and we can call it a day. So we can grab all this stuff out of here, have just enough room in our inventory and I actually do need to insulate a little bit more copper cable before we jump into today's episode. So I just realized that there's nine right here, which I could have grabbed, but whatever. Uh, so we will insulate that. Hopefully that will be enough for us. And one last thing I do need to make is going to be, I believe I need, I need one hopper. So that's going to be one chest. And then I think I'm also short another chest. So we're going to make one of these into a hopper and one of them will just leave. Okay. So. First things first, we're probably gonna set up the uranium ore to the uranium processing area right down here because we're gonna wanna leave the water underground. So having the pump with the infinite pool will be easy down here. And uh, we can just pull the wiring out through the back. So we'll wire this over. So we're gonna wanna put the pump right down here and we're gonna wanna rotate it so that it's facing down so that it can actually get to the water. And we'll just make the infinite pool right here and can have that go right here and we're gonna have to get out of here too okay so we can cover all this up that should be good we shouldn't have to worry about it actually breaking the infinite pool that can happen occasionally oh gosh we're about to break through to outside right now i do recall that this happened last episode and i got a little bit annoyed so let's just cover that up so we'll wire it like this and it is going to look a little bit weird Maybe we won't wire it like that. Maybe we'll wire it like this. So we could always go like this, making what I just did a little bit useless, but we'll do that. So we'll wire it like that, and this thing is going to start pumping it out. And you can see that it does just suck it up. Occasionally, if you do set up the 3 by one it can ruin your infinite pool, which is a little bit annoying. So I would recommend setting up the 2x2. Two two. But then we can put the fluid ejector upgrade in there like before, and... A couple more stone bricks so that I can just cover this ground up right here. And then we can easily just set up, let's get the macerator is the first one that goes down over here. Gonna have to put some wire to that. So that's the first part of it. And then we need the ore washing plant, which is going to be taking the water. And then we are going to need the thermal centrifuge, which is right here. So that can go down right there. So all we got to do then is throw an ejector upgrade in each one of these and we should be done. So putting an ejector upgrade in this one will actually be good if I want to put a chest over here, which I actually do want to. So we'll put that there and we actually want to go make one more chest then really quickly. 
Okay, so now we got a chest for the output from the fuel rod automation, which is going to be kind of, I guess, sitting in the sky a little bit, sitting in the air. I don't know. I would prefer to have it on the ground just like this one over here, but there is not enough room in this very tiny room right now, so we will just put it in the air. So what we're going to do is center it around this electric sorting machine. Uh, mainly just because we want to maximize the amount of sorting that we can actually have done with this. We're going to need pretty much every side we can get. We actually are going to need every side. Power is going to go on one. We're going to have a chest on another. We're going to have three machines around it, and we're going to have a hopper on the front. So, uh, yes, we are going to be using every possible side. So, we can just use some cobble to get this one off the wall. And if we're going to want it to be separated from this machine by one, we're going to want it to go right here. So, we're going to put it right there. And you can see that we got east on this side, so keep that in mind. So we can put the chest right over here, that should be fine. And then we can take the, let's do the canning machine, and we'll put the canning machine on the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a jetpack right now, so it is going to be a little bit difficult to actually get up there and place things down, so I'm going to have to pillar up a little bit. But... We're going to put down one metal form over there and one up here. Now, the reason I'm going to have two of these is because one of them is going to be set to extruding, which we can do as the top one, and the other one is going to be set to rolling because we're going to need some plates, which are going to be iron plates, and then those are going to get turned into the fuel rods, which are empty, by actually extruding them. So, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so now that all the machines and everything are situated, we can hook these up, get them some power, and actually start sorting everything so that it's going where it needs to be, and then we pretty much should be done, and we can run through it, make sure that all of it works, and actually watch the entire process as a whole. So, we're just going to take some of the insulated copper cable, wire it up right from over here, and we can send it to each machine. Now, I'm really happy that we don't have to worry about heat units anymore. Uh, last episode, if you guys saw, we had to deal with the fluid heat generator, and it was really annoying to get set up, but luckily today, we only have to worry about actually just wiring everything up. Even though we are using the thermal centrifuge, that again just gets heat from regular electricity, which is great. So I do have this thing down here running right now just so that we can get a little bit of uranium so that we can start processing it up here. Uh, but there's nothing fancy going on down here. Uh, we just have the ore washing plant washing the crushed uranium, which is then having the uh, uranium output over into here, which is the purified crushed uranium ore, which is then going to get output right here and directly into a chest. And that'll give us the tiny piles of, I believe, uranium-235 and the regular uranium-238. Uh, so once that's done, we will end up using that to craft a little bit, and then it'll go back in here. So... What we're going to want to do is wait to put the hopper on the front for now, just so that it's a little bit easier to configure all of this. So, because this metal former is going to be the rolling one, that is going to be to, I believe, what is, that should be north. So, we're going to set the default to south so that it goes into the chest by default, so that we don't have to put anything in here, we don't have to set any whitelist for it, and everything will just go in there uh, that doesn't actually have anywhere else to go. Uh, so then I said north is going to be where we want the rolling iron to go which is going to be just a regular iron ingot because that's going to get rolled turn into the iron plate and i do have a couple iron plates here now these are going to want to go up because those are going to be extruded in the top one and i also forgot we want to throw ejector upgrades in all of these two so each one needs an ejector upgrade and essentially what's going to happen is uh, this is then going to put out the fuel rod that's empty, of course, which is going to be right here, and that is going to want to go down. So we're going to need to throw an iron plate in here really quickly, let it process through so that we can get one to actually set the filter for it. Uh, and then once we have that, everything for the most part should be filtered except the enriched nuclear fuel uranium. Yeah, enriched uranium nuclear fuel, which we're going to actually have to craft. So we can grab this out of the chest and set this to go down. So that should be going down, and along with that, we're gonna to wanna to set the, again, the enriched uranium nuclear fuel to go down. Now to craft this, we need the uranium-238 and tiny piles of uranium-235, which is what we should be getting from this process over here. Hopefully this isn't ruining our power. I can check really quickly. Uh, eh, it is draining a lot of power right now, so uh, I will be a little bit hesitant about that. And you can see our system over here is going absolutely insane. So let me get this, let me get this out of here and get this out of here for now. That's the big pet peeve about that system. I really need to upgrade the storage for the energy in that so it doesn't happen at night. But every time, it just starts, starts freaking out. So hopefully I can throw this back in here and it will, 
Yeah, it won't freak out. Okay. So we're going to come back over here. Uh, we are getting it relatively low on power while this whole thing is processing. I'm pretty sure it's just because this was heating up. Uh, it does take a lot of power for it to do that, but you can see we have 10 uranium-238 and four tiny piles of uranium. So if you didn't see the previous episode, you might not know that this actually is radioactive. So hopefully you know that uranium is radioactive, but it's actually bad for you. It will give you a debuff based on radioactivity. So what you're going to want to do is keep it in a containment box like I have here. But luckily for me, I am wearing a full hazmat suit. I look super pimp, don't I? Totally no, I actually look really stupid because of the scuba helmet, but we're not going to be affected right now by any of the radioactivity of this. So we can grab it out of this chest. You can see we don't get a debuff in here and we can walk over casually, grab this stuff out and start crafting. So we can go like this, like this and like that. And boom, we have an enriched uranium nuclear fuel. So we can actually make a second one of these real quick and we can throw the rest back in that other chest. Uh, as long as it sits over here, we actually don't need to worry about uh, radiation either. Man, that thing is still acting up. Okay, sorry about that, guys. That system was being a little bit annoying, so I just grabbed the stuff out of it, threw it away, and hopefully it won't act up anymore this episode. Hasn't been a huge problem recently, but apparently it's just it just wants to be annoying today. So, now that we have this enriched uranium nuclear fuel, that is what's going to be going right in here. So, if we look at the recipe for this, you can see it's a canning machine with the nuclear fuel and an empty fuel rod. So, we already set the nuclear fuel to go down, or the fuel rod to go down, so now we want the nuclear fuel to go down too, which will put both of them down here. So, everything should be sorted correctly now. All we need to do is throw a hopper on here, and we should be able to take one piece of iron, throw it in there, two pieces of the nuclear fuel, throw those in there, and the fuel rod and we should be able to actually get in this chest two of these fuel rods uranium what well, i don't know why it isn't just called uranium fuel rod but i guess that's because there's a couple different types of fuel rods you can have but you can see we got our first one there these will also still cause radiation so do be careful when you're holding these uh, don't think just because it's in a fuel rod that it won't cause radiation uh, and then this thing will finish processing the second one and boom we now have two fuel rods which we could turn in to a dual fuel rod if we wanted to use another iron plate. Unfortunately, I can't automate this process using only IC2 because there isn't an automated crafting, just crafting bench or an assembler like an IC or an uh, immersive engineering. Uh, so unfortunately, I would have to manually craft this, but that's not too big of a deal. And this again is relatively cheap. It just takes the single fuel rods and some iron plates and some copper plates. So eventually I might make it so that this whole process creates an excess of those and throws them in this chest too so that I can create them but we are left with single fuel rods, which we could use if we really wanted to. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. I know it's a little bit on the shorter side, but I did want to get a video out today for you guys, and I found this process to be relatively interesting. So if you did find the video entertaining or useful in any way, feel free to give it a like. It does really help me out a lot, and I will talk to you guys later.